I'm sure many of you have heard of Brian Turner, a popular vegan bodybuilder, aka juiced up fake natural liar. He recently had an interview with Dr. Greger, or should we say, The Claw. As seen in Scary Movie 2, E.T., as well as Harry Potter, it's surprising he can even hold up that microphone with that appendage he calls a hand. Let's see what they have to say. All right, Dr. Greger, thank you for being on the channel. I really appreciate it. How you Happy doing? to be here. How you doing, man? Good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I feel like this video is going to be an interesting one, and I feel like there's going to be a lot of people watching ready to nitpick everything away because there's a lot of anti-vegan arguments out there, and I feel like there'd be no better person to answer them than the famed Dr. Gregor himself. Happy to help. So you ready to jump into this? Let's do it. Okay, so the first question is a lot of anti-vegans go straight to the anti-nutrient -nu argument, which is, you know, a lot of plant-based foods have lectins, phytates, oxalates, and that cancels out the ability to absorb vitamins and minerals. What is your opinion on that? And what's your advice with that? It's ironic. I mean, you can't make a, you're not getting enough nutrition on a plant-based diet since of course, plants are where essentially all our nutrition originally comes from. Are plants really where our nutrition originally comes from if you're starting to look like a corpse in your late 40s? I've beaten this topic to death. The forms of vitamins and minerals in plants are not available to humans. We do not absorb them properly. The burden of proof for fruits and vegetables to contain important nutrients is on vegans. It shouldn't be accepted as a fact. Uh, but so for example, lectins, I've got a bunch of videos about Dr. Gundry's plant paradox. And I think the first video in the series on nutritionfacts.org is simply titled, uh, Dr. Gundry's plant paradox is wrong. And I just go and enunciate and go through uh, all the reasons why. Um, I mean, well, the kernel of truth is that sure, you don't want to eat raw kidney beans, but it's not really even possible to eat raw kidney beans. They're right. little rocks. But if you soak them overnight, they'd get firm and rubbery, and then you can put them in a salad and make people really sick because the lectins, but they're utterly destroyed by proper cooking. You can squash your bean with a fork. Then you don't have to worry about lectins. How can you say lectins are harmless when people are quitting the vegan diet after a few months because it just destroys their gut lining? This happens because of gluten as well. Are we just ignoring those people? The fairly local vegan is at the point of consuming only pureed, boiled, baby food mush, and she still spends half the day lying in bed. The only purpose of consuming these harmful plant foods is as a source of energy, as when you consume them in artificially high amounts without animal foods present, you destroy your stomach, you destroy your health. Uh, potential anti-cancer benefits, um, uh, which you particularly see in, in phytates, phytic acid. See, based on studies on puppies and rats done decades ago, it was considered an anti-nutrient in terms of absorption of calcium. But now we think of phytic acid, these phytates, as beneficial, having anti-cancer properties, we should go out of our way. We should not be soaking our nuts. Why? Because we might be losing phytates. We don't want to lose phytates. That's one of the benefits of eating nuts. So, uh... Saying that phytates have anti-cancer benefits doesn't address the mineral deficiencies that most people are suffering from. For Dr. Greger to say you shouldn't soak your beans to reduce phytic acid is comical, as phytates are literally the storage form of the mineral for the plant, meaning that mineral will not get absorbed unless you soak it and break down the phytic acid. Um, and then uh, oxalates. Um, uh... Uh, there are a few high oxalate um, uh, sources, um, so spinach, mm -hmm. Swiss chard, beet greens, you don't want to overdo those. Okay. Uh, if you're following my recommendations to eat um, lots of greens, and so my uh, daily dozen recommendation is two servings of greens plus a serving of cruciferous vegetables, which could also be greens. If you're doing cups of day, cups as in plural, cups a day, you want to diversify your greens. You don't want to just do high oxalate greens like spinach, Swiss chard, and beet greens. You want to eat arugula and kale and collards, all those other wonderful greens. 
Um, and it's because you can get too many oxalates and you run into kidney stone problems, even if you uh, don't otherwise have any, uh, any uh, kind of predisposing factors. He acknowledges that you shouldn't overdo certain high oxalate greens, but if you go back to the fact that the nutrients in these foods aren't bioavailable, why are we risking consuming high levels of potentially harmful substances? Avoiding high oxalate foods doesn't answer the question of mineral absorption being inhibited by oxalates. It also doesn't answer why you should eat your greens. The propaganda of eat your fruits and veggies is a great way for people to stuff themselves full of gigantic portions of low calorie vegetation that will never satisfy their appetite. Very lucrative for big broccoli. So you would say that the absorption of calcium is not a problem because you're having oxalates when you're eating spinach and kale and all these these dark greens and stuff. Oh, I mean, it's, you're not going to absorb the calcium. You don't go to spinach for calcium because it's stingy with the calcium because it's it's uh, it's combined to the oxalates. But if you it's not like but if you made like a spinach kale pesto, it's not like the oxalates in the spinach would somehow grab onto the oxalates in, uh, grab onto the calcium in kale. It doesn't I mean it just binds up its own calcium, so you just you get calcium from other low oxalate dark green leafy vegetables. Okay. Because one of the arguments is that if you're eating like tofu or something like that, that's calcium set, and that's how you're getting a good portion of calcium. But you're also having spinach with it. The spinach is going to stop you from absorbing the calcium from the tofu. Bullshit. Nice. Uh, but there are healthier sources of soy than tofu because it's relatively processed foods. So tempeh or edamame or the whole soy foods, even better. Okay. Nice. Doesn't it seem strange to you how all of these young vegan influencers are praising these decaying corpse-like vegan doctors? Almost like they are being paid. How could you seriously sit in a room and smile across from that zombie? Gregor is right about oxalates from one food not inhibiting the absorption of calcium from another, but the point is that whenever a food has a significant mineral content, it likely has a correspondingly high oxalate or phytate aka phytic acid content to which these minerals are bound to. It also ignores the real issue of vitamin K2 and vitamin D3 being needed to mobilize calcium. Calcium is the last thing we need in our diets. The amount the body needs is insignificant. Without vitamin K2 and vitamin D3, calcium cannot be used. Even if you get vitamin K2 from a food like natto on a vegan diet, you won't have enough cholesterol and other precursor nutrients for efficient metabolism. Vegans don't understand this because they stick to preschool levels of nutrition so that they can brainwash and fearmonger everyone else. All right, so next up, the other biggest argument that I get, because my channel is you know heavily fitness-based, muscle-based, things like that, so a lot of the arguments is that plant-based protein is inferior because of the amino acid profile. Specifically, the amount of leucine is lower in plant-based foods. So what's your response to that, and what's your advice? Thank God for that, because leucine increases the engine of uh, aging um, enzyme TOR, mTOR, um, and I presume uh, there'll be a substantial discussion on my next book, How Not to Age, which should be out December 2022 on just that very uh, topic. And so for longevity's sake, we want to decrease uh, leucine intake. We want to decrease methionine mm -hmm. intake, also found concentrated in animal proteins. We want to decrease branching amino acid intake. We want to decrease, in fact, our essential amino acid intake across the board down to recommended levels instead of getting the excess protein. Um, which uh, is associated with uh, cardiometabolic disease. Dr. Greger, why are you writing a book on how not to age if you look 20 years older than you are? The body systems are not efficient enough to metabolize plant amino acids into proteins as you aren't getting enough of the other precursor nutrients. It's not paper value of amino acids equals protein. That's not how these cycles in the body work. Krebs cycle, urea cycle, I've explained these in my Cam Newton video. Blaming mTOR for aging is like blaming running for your knees hurting. It's simplifying the answer to avoid the underlying issue. What's funny is that vegans will blame all of these fake things in order to get people to follow the vegan diet, but when the vegan diet actually starts causing them issues, it can't possibly be the diet. The third biggest argument that I get from anti-vegans is about omega-3 and the fact that plant-based omega-3 sources are high, well, are entirely ALA, alpha-linoic acid. 
Alpha linolenic acid. I mean, this guy doesn't even know what it's called. And our conversion of ALA to EPA and DHA is poor. Um, so what would your opinion and advice be on that one? So you need two things. You need conversion and you need to have a good source of ALA in the first place. And okay. so I encourage you. That's one of the reasons why one of my daily dozen, this is my daily dozen checklist of all the healthiest of healthy foods out there, a uh, tablespoon of ground flax seeds. That's one of the reasons that flax seeds are on there because it's a very concentrated source of ALA, alpha linolenic acid. And we can facilitate that process by cutting down our intake of junky omega-6 rich oils such as cottonseed oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil and corn oil, some of these junky um, uh, processed food oils one might find. One can also just take long chain omega-3s pre-formed um, in algae or yeast-based EPA, DHA supplements. I encourage people to consider taking 250 milligrams of pre-formed DHA um, uh, every day. For long-term brain health, particularly in men, um, I, uh, until we know more, I would suggest it. Now, of course, you can get it from fish, but along with fish comes because of how polluted our world has become. If you look at toxic heavy metals, PCBs, dioxins, the highest levels of most of these persistent organic pollutants are found in the aquatic food chain. The only way, I mean, it's the healthiest source for everybody would be um, either make yourself from uh, the short chain fatty acids or um, take a preformed algae-based pollutant-free source, a uh, plant-based source. Dr. Greger is right that reducing omega-6 increases conversion of omega-3 into EPA, but a vegan diet is so high in omega-6, this is not possible. There has never been a study that even shows alpha linolenic acid can be converted into DHA, only EPA in very small amounts. And even Dr. Greger acknowledges that the brain will rot away without an omega-3 supplement. To say that fish is polluted, but not acknowledge that algae supplements are processed with hexane and are incredibly toxic is comical. Last year was a heavy year of very popular YouTubers going ex-vegan. And then the thing that they say, a lot of them was saying is that they had, you know, uh, some fish or they had their first, you know, piece of steak or something like that. And they woke up the next day, their sexual functions were going back to normal. They were able to get erections. They were becoming lubricated. Their libido came back is one that I hear a lot. And I don't know, what do you, what do you have to say about that? Physiologically, I can't see how uh, a fish stick is going to bring back your penis. I mean, I, so it's, I mean, see, it would seem psychological. I mean, there's something there. I mean, there's, uh, there's something called placebo effect, right? Where you get um, uh, beneficial effects that, because the, you're, you're imagining them to be beneficial effects from something that's actually nothing. Uh, is he malfunctioning? Sexual function relies on blood flow. How do you increase blood flow to the pelvic region? You do that by having healthy arteries. How do you have healthy arteries? There's only one diet ever proven to reverse heart disease, opening up arteries without drugs, without surgery, plant-based diet, a whole food plant-based diet. I mean, if that was the all a plant-based diet could do, reverse the number one killer of men and women, right? then you think it'd be the kind of the default diet until proven otherwise. And the fact that it can also be so effective, preventing arrest and reversing other leading killers, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, seem to make the case for plant-based eating simply overwhelming. One of the people that I'm talking about specifically did say they had fish that night, then woke up the next morning, and everything was feeling way different. You know, they were getting erections and things like that. So I figured you were going to say mind, mind over matter, basically. Like, they convinced themselves that they felt better the next morning because they had convinced themselves that the vegan diet was causing them to feel bad. So the first time they had something that wasn't vegan, it was going to be the cure. And then the next morning, they woke up telling themselves it was the cure. You would hope that these vegans at least have a shred of honesty, but they don't. This is clearly not a placebo effect. It's been reported in every ex-vegan that has a media spotlight. Anne Hathaway, Tim Sheaf, Raw Alignment, Matt Monarch. When they eat fish, they felt like their brain was rebooting. Goes to show that the animal version of B12, of omega-3, contain different forms of nutrients as well as 
other nutrients that work synergistically that your body needs that is not obtained on a vegan diet whether you're supplementing or not. How hard is it for these clowns just to say that the vegan diet isn't for everyone? How can they double down so hard on their BS? It makes them look so disingenuous to anyone with an IQ above 80. That's why the only people that go vegan are stupid or are cute, cuddly animal lovers. Now we're getting into kind of like the less popular uh, arguments, but I still do hear these quite often. This more so comes from like the hardcore carnivore channels who are really, really fervent on, you know, calling out vegans and stuff. And so this one is, um, a lot of them will say that veganism is causing vegans to age quicker. So their skin is aging quicker. Their skin is discolored or more pale over time. What's your response to that one? I mean, uh, the studies that have been done on skin health, um, where, I mean, the randomized control trials, so you they took college students, randomized to eat more fruits and vegetables or not, got a significant improvement in um, rated uh, attractiveness and healthfulness. And it's because we get this golden glow because the carotenoids in fruits and vegetables gets deposited in our skin. I mean, then we get this kind of rosy glow because we actually have more circulation to our face. And so when you actually take people, randomize them to a healthier diet, and then put their pictures before and after to unbiased, independent, third-party observers and say, who's more attractive? Um, who looks healthier? Um, it's not only... Um, in a cross-sectional basis, those eating healthier rate higher in that way, but you can actually, over a few weeks, um, significantly improve the attractiveness of uh, people. And this is not just white Caucasian skin, but it's done for Asians, it's done for African Americans, for any skin tone, you can improve its healthfulness by eating um, uh, carotenoids, which are only found in fruits and vegetables. Uh, a vegan diet gives us a healthy and rosy glow. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, is that why all of your vegan puss boys are on my video saying I wear makeup? You're wearing three inch thick glasses, your skin looks like a moldy lemon, and your hand looks like a slimy parsnip. Let's take a step back to reality. How, how can how can he say that? How can this doofus, yeah, yeah, your skin looks rosy, but like, fucking more, I swear to God. Dude. The only thing one really has to seriously be concerned about on a plant-based diet is getting a regular reliable source of vitamin B12. Otherwise, you can end up uh, paralyzed, demented, or dead. Okay. That's There's a happy note! <laughs> but serious shit, right? Right, How right. How bad? Okay, so there was, a, there, was a, there was an article published in the New England Journal of Medicine, the most prestigious medical journal on the planet. Yeah. You know what it's called? Blindness in a vegan. How did that do for the movement? We can't do this. We can't have people ruin it up for everybody else right. because they're stupid and making us all look bad. Yeah. Right? Everybody needs to get their B12. Screwing what up exactly? Your agenda to line your pockets with that sweet big broccoli money? In this study, a man went blind because he didn't supplement B12. Do vegans tell you that when saying how great the vegan diet is? Oh my god, go vegan for the animals, but make sure to take your B12 so you don't go blind. Well, that'll wrap up this interview. It's amazing how the vegan echo chamber never ends. Due to the low IQ population and Zoomer attention span, I feel like I will be stuck on the same topics over and over again. At least I can try to have some fun with it. Thank you guys for joining me. Please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon. If you guys want to support me further, definitely check out my book, The Ancestral Indigenous Diet. That is available on Amazon, a testament to my seven years on a nutrient-based animal foods diet. You can also go to Frankie's Naturals, Frankie's Free Range Meat, uh, frank-stefano.com. Check all that stuff out, guys, down in the description below. Thanks again, guys. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.